Uh, hello YouTube. Um, today I'm just going to be doing a quick video on how I analyze my own games on chess.com. Uh, I guess whenever you're analyzing your games, uh, it's always kind of uh, frustrating, I guess, at least for me it is, to, to find out um, you know, how many mistakes you made or how horrible those mistakes were or how many mistakes your opponent made that you didn't take advantage of. Um, so, I mean, the best you can do is you can just kind of come up with kind of a clinical process where you kind of go through it and you say, okay, this is what I need to learn and this is how I can train myself not to make these types of errors. So I'll show you a couple of my games uh, recently. I, 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 play, I play a little bit of Blitz online. Um, so I've got a, I got a decent Blitz rating. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of people that are better than me, so it's not like the world's greatest Blitz rating or anything. Um, you know, I'm not on I'm not on Nakamura's level, uh, but you know, I try. Um, but I do make a lot of mistakes. So I'll show you a couple of my recent games. Um, so these are my blitz games right here. So I've got some wins, and of course I've got a loss. And you know, we need to analyze um, all of these uh, games. We need to analyze the losses. We need to analyze the wins. And of course, you can see my accuracy in some of these games. And my accuracy, you know, I, I usually hang out. If I can hang out in the 90s, I'm usually playing pretty good. Um, so like a 96% accuracy for this game, for example, that's uh, excellent accuracy. So that's really good. That was 21 move game, 96% accuracy. That's good. And most of these games are in the 90s. So you actually see my worst game uh, wasn't a loss. My worst game was was this win. Um, right here with a 28% accuracy. Now, for me, that's really rare. Sometimes I dip down into the 80s, but it's very rare for me to have a 28%. So let's click on this and let's see what went wrong and what went wrong, you know, so much that I only had a 28% accuracy. So I can tell you that the game started out in a Sicilian Dragon, and of course I've done videos on the Sicilian Dragon, I have a, a series on the Sicilian Dragon, and I can tell you why my accuracy was really low. It was it was a blitz game, and I played the move Queen B6, and I've actually seen quite a few moves in this position. Um, you know, I've, uh, I don't know if I've covered this variation specifically, but, but I've seen quite a few tries. And so my opponent really threw me for a loop when he played a move that I have never ever seen before. And I haven't really analyzed it, so then all of a sudden I have to analyze it at the board. And I've never seen it before, but it's a blitz game, so I don't have an infinite amount of time to analyze this move. So he whipped out that move kind of at the speed of light, like he played it really fast. Like if you look at the move times, like he played that move very quickly. He, If I remember, he played it in less than two seconds. So I'm thinking maybe he's got some specific preparation. Now, of course, the computer clearly points out that he didn't this is just a mistake so actually the first move i considered was actually just a6 attacking this knight and then i looked at the potential of knight f5 you know which would have hit my queen and the dark squares are being attacked and then queen d8 and then knight g7 and for some reason i i was under the illusion that maybe something bad was happening on the dark squares and this was just the the fallacy of my uh, of my calculation. If I'd played a6, knight f5, queen d8, and then knight takes g7, and then I just take here, because of course this knight has uh, basically no escape, he has to sacrifice this knight, so I'm just winning basically all the material in the world. So that's the first move where my accuracy takes a dive, because I didn't play a6, because I thought, well, that'll that'll weaken the dark squares, and maybe he has some sneaky way that he can get in that's part of his preparation because he played this move so fast and of course i was absolutely wrong so i play a move just to avoid whatever preparation he has of course my move is awful so queen a5 is a missed win but okay so i'll be familiar with this move next time if it comes up in a blitz game or remember i can just play the move a6 and also i should have calculated just a little bit more cleanly i should have calculated okay a6 knight f5 Queen d8, knight g7, and then a takes b5, and I should have trusted my calculation. So there's two mistakes that I made. The, the I, Number one, I, I wasn't prepared for knight, knight cb5. Of course, you can't be prepared for every move that drops an entire piece. There's a lot of moves that do that in any game. So 
I, I had never seen it before, and I, I responded with something that I knew was safe. But, it, of course, this gives him some chances. So he plays bishop f3, and he's back in the game. So now I've got to win the game all over. So now I'm, I'm back to playing best moves. So knight d4, knight d4, and then I play a6, and a6 is good. And queen c7 is okay, so nothing wrong here. Knight d7 is fine. b5 is fine. I'm just playing really solid positional moves. Now bishop b7, the computer jumps on me for this. It thinks bishop b7 is bad. It says e5 is best. And of course, it's, it's a big drop in points, so we kind of want to see why it thinks e5 is best. Now, of course, bishop b7 is a supernatural move, so I'm not going to get on myself too hard for making this move, because it's just very natural just to develop your last piece. But let's take a look at what the computer wanted to do. Let's see what it wanted to do with e5. And it's saying a whole point for black, which is... An enormous amount of material so let's see what it wants here so it wants knight b3 ef4 bishop f4 oh and here's the point we get to play knight e5 oh that's nice i would have liked to have that outpost that would have been pretty and then yeah now we got lots of we got lots of juicy squares to put our bishop later that would have been nice okay so that's a theme that we're going to have to try to catch next time when we have a knight and a pawn here we missed this this cute little motif where I'll end up with a post for my knight and a good a better square for my bishop to go to okay I really like that so I'm learning I'm learning about this new idea I, I could have had an outpost and that would have been a nice outpost okay and I'll have to remember that idea in other Sicilians that I play see even at my age even with all my experience and you know 15 years of master chess behind me actually I think 16 years now of master chess behind me and I'm getting older, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not quite 40 yet, but I'm getting older. <laughs> you have to push yourself to keep learning new things. And sometimes it's embarrassing to say that you don't know about an idea like E5. It's embarrassing to think that at 39 and all these years I've been playing chess at the master level that I don't know everything. But I don't. And none of us do. Even Gary Kasparov doesn't know everything. He doesn't know every trick. Even Magnus Carlsen doesn't know everything. He doesn't know any trick. So... What drives me with with chess, what drives me to keep trying to play better chess every single game, and what drives me to keep pushing myself to learn more and more and more, is I always ask myself this question. Um, if I were to sit down with the world champion, or if I were to sit down with like Gary Kasparov, you know, the most knowledgeable person in the world about chess, would I have something to add to the conversation? And that's what pushes me. That's what drives me. Could I show Gary Kasparov or could I show Magnus Carlsen an idea or a thought or a position or a concept that they hadn't thought of yet? What can I add to chess? And that drives me to keep working on chess. And of course, it drives me to keep working on my game. And that's why when you get going over your games, it's important not to get too emotional about the mistakes because chess is not a game of winning and losing. I mean, we make it into that. Chess is a game about ideas. And the more ideas you know, the more winning you'll do. You know? And, I mean, look at this game. I had a 20-some percent accuracy level, and I ended up winning this game. Why did I really win this game? I won this game because, in the end, with all of my mistakes, I was probably just a little bit more familiar with these types of positions than my opponent. Because my opponent, even though like he's got a huge advantage here, wasn't able to capitalize on my errors. I mean, my opponent's completely winning at this point. And wasn't able to capitalize on everything. And my experience allowed me to find ways, and this is something that I learned when I was a young player, it allowed me to find ways to improve my position. Even though my position is much, much worse, I found a plan and I executed that plan and I found ways to improve my position. My opponent really floundered with finding a way to improve his position. He had basically just one problem in the position. He had this pin at this point that I created, and he was unable to solve this problem satisfactorily in the next couple of moves. He played a4, and I played rook d8, and I'm threatening to take advantage of that pin, and he has to solve this problem to make progress. And in the blitz game, he was just unable to do it, and he comes up with a poor solution. So rook e5. So the correct solution was just to block the rook. He could have played bishop d5. And this comes back to kind of just experience. You know, the more experience you have and the more things you've looked at and the more types of positions that you've seen, 
the better chance you have of navigating this. Now, I navigated the opening very poorly, though. So clearly, I have to work on that, right? But I managed to to just kind of scrap it out. But but overall, I mean, for me, this was a this was a very poor game. Um, I, I played very poorly, and I mean, by all means, my my opponent should have uh, should have won this game. I mean, Bishop d5, and my opponent should have won this game. So that's painful, but I learned a couple cool things. I learned about e5. I learned about a6 in the early opening. So those are like the two things that I'm going to take from that. I'm going to take e5 and that's a that's a huge thing and i'm going to take um i could have played this move after knight on c to b5 i could have played a6 so i'm gonna put that in the back of my mind and say okay i gotta remember that stuff so every once in a while though you gotta you gotta build your confidence a little bit too right so you gotta take a look at at the games where you did well just like you take a look at the games where you did poorly so so we'll take a look at uh my games again so we'll go back to the uh We'll go back to the good old uh, archive here and we'll check it out. So we'll, we'll 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 leave this and we'll go back and we'll take a look at what was my last game where I had a really high, really high percentage here. This this was a good one. So this was my very last game and I have a very high percentage, and I have a very high percentage in this one too. Um, so let's look at let's look at the latest one where I've got a ninety five point two percent accuracy. Intense, nice win. You were never in trouble. So these are always nice ones. It says I had a missed win though. But I think that was towards the end, so I, I don't know if that counts. We'll see. So Queen Pawn Accelerated London System. So I did, you, everybody knows my opinion on the London, so not a fan. So I do follow my own advice, by the way. <laughs> I play my, my preparation. And um, I'm going to say already that, you know, if you've looked at my videos, I, I do already feel like, like maybe black is even already better um, in these positions. And uh, you can just see that my assessment just keeps climbing. Uh, the computer really isn't commenting on the moves. It just kind of thinks, uh, you know, that everybody's moves are kind of close to the best. And Black's position is just getting better and better with each move. Now we have this weakness on, on C3. I'm wrenching this weakness, and I'm, I'm playing solid moves. So I can't jump on myself for anything yet, because every move is kind of... I'm playing close to the best move, so... Castles, I could have played Knight A5... But but they're about the same. I, I want to get my king out of the middle there, and I still I played knight a5, going to c4. And yeah, here I was really debating. I was debating whether I should play rook c6 or rook c8. So these are like the moments where even though I know I played like a good move because the computer doesn't say anything, I want to see if the computer thinks my move is best or if like rook c6 was best, because I really want to know if the alternative... Okay, so it liked knight c4. And then what about here? Oh, it liked b6. It also liked queen c6. I, I'm maybe leaning towards that now because I had trouble getting my queen. Uh, I spent a lot of time fixing this queen later. So he played knight g3, and then I start fixing my queen, which I kind of have to. And then I fix my queen some more. It liked rook f8. I kind of like that now too. And then we have knight e3, and I took, which I, I liked. that Once I took, I felt like I had a better position. And it liked rook c4, but I like rook f e h, putting the rook on the same file as the queen, so I can't jump on myself for that. Bishop d6 was a mistake, though. I had rook c4, apparently. Oh, just winning this pawn. Just jumping on top of the pawn and winning it, and I'm still wrenching the weaknesses. So, this is one of the things. You get a good position, and good technique can really make all the difference in the world. So, bishop d6 was kind of an error. It gave him a lot of the position back. And yeah, this he was able to liquidate some of these pawns. I didn't mind so much, though. I figured I was better after queen f4. Even though I was losing this pawn, I figured I had the activity. And, I mean, it turns out that was correct, but the computer is giving all zeros here, which means that I, apparently I did give away my advantage. And then g6 is best, but I thought my activity trumped the pawn. It does trump the pawn, but, but no more than that, apparently. And g6 and queen e3 is best. And then I really liked my activity. Rook b5 is excellent. Rook takes c3. And of course, I can get my pawn back. But you see, here's the thing. It, it gave all of white's move as, as either good or best. But now my assessment is jumping. So maybe I'm just right and the computer's wrong. So, okay. So rook, rook c2, check. And he's losing. It's saying rook c5 is best. Maybe he can hold. Maybe rook c5 and he holds or something. But I think, yeah, rook c5, and even the computer says rook d2, then f4, then rook on e to e2. That mm, that can't be right. Two rooks on the seventh like that. Black's got to be winning. Okay, so 
I think I, I think my assessment was kind of correct because now it's saying that I'm just totally winning, and none of my moves were too too crazy. Yeah, and then he resigned. Okay, so what can I take away from this game, even though I played exceptionally well? This is another thing I like to teach, is treat all wins like losses. <laughs> Every time you win a game, just dissect it like you're like you're inspecting a crime scene or something. You have to treat every single win that you have like it's a loss. You have to try to uh, nitpick those little errors. So I would say maybe the only thing I can really nitpick at is maybe bishop d6. I missed this idea of just playing rook c4 and just having better technique, but I don't think I was wrong with my idea of queen f4. So it's even tough to nitpick that. I, I think I have to go back a little bit further, and I think I have to nitpick um, way back here where I played uh, b6. I think I have to nitpick kind of when I played b6, yeah. Instead of b6, I think, yeah, queen c6, that's huge. Because I did end up having trouble getting this queen back. So I could have played queen c6, and then I could have played b6. So there's 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 the takeaway from that. That's probably the improvement. But overall, that was a that was a pretty good game. But that's what you got to do all the time. You got to go over your games, even your blitz games, and you got to try to analyze, and you got to try to figure out kind of what ideas you missed and what you can do differently next time. And you have to do this with your wins. You have to do this with your losses. You have to do this with the games that you're the least proud of. And you have to attack the games that you're the most proud of and try to find those mistakes, try to find those errors or those slight improvements. And that's how we all get better. And um, it's okay to make mistakes. We just got to learn from them. So anyways, I hope that... Uh, this video taught you something. Uh, I hope you learned something new about chess. So thank you very much for watching.